here is uh, Tim Bomtemps from ESPN uh, here in the last uh, 24, uh, 48 hours talking about the Denver Nuggets being one of the losers in free agency. Listen to this. I think they're the massive losers of free agency. Like, you can you can debate. Like, people are going to pay more attention to Paul George. He's a bigger name, right, that the Clippers didn't pay him. It's inexcusable that Denver didn't. All these young guys on the bench that they can play. This is just about the Cronkies didn't want to spend the money, and they can hide behind the second apron stuff. But they've never been a team that's historically gone far into the tax, and they didn't want to go far into the tax to keep this guy. Wow. Mm. I mean, th- that is that is pointed yeah. criticism, mentioning the owners by name, uh, from a guy that it does a tremendous job at the national level, Tim Bomtemps. Uh, he's the person that runs the straw polls and everything, and you see him all over ESPN. Uh, his profile's risen here in the last four or five years for sure. Um, but, man, he, he's, he, he put his crosshairs right on the Nuggets organization, putting it all on the finances. Do, do, you, do you agree how um, plain and simple that, that, that he puts it, or do you put more stock into it? No, there's, there's, there's more layers here. What, what did Sean say that one time when he was like, sometimes we make things harder than they have to be, and, and some things are just cut and dry, and this is one of these things where it's cut and dry, because where are we getting this money from? The owners. Cronky. He makes a decision. If Cronky walked down the stairs and said, hey, Calvin, I'm okay with paying KCP, I think they get that done because he is the owner. He's the one that makes the shots. He's the one that has the money. Mm-hmm. But when the owner says, hey, look, I'm not willing to do that, you're going to have to kind of start to, to get things together, then you kind of have to listen to your boss. And so it, it's fair that you, you give some of the blame to the Cronkies because that's where it starts. Where do, It has to start somewhere. It has to start with the owners because they're the ones with the money. Well, I, I think I think there may uh, be something to this for sure, and I do not want to be dismissive of his criticism because we're not, we're not privy to the conversations behind the scenes. Um, but I think he, Tim, who I have a lot of respect for, he's making it, he's oversimplifying it. Mm. I believe Calvin Booth and the Denver Nuggets legitimately believe that Christian Brown is perfectly suited right now to fill uh, KCP shoes, or or maybe it's ninety percent of it. Which, honestly, Phil, and I s- said this to you yesterday. You, you know, you asked me going into a break, like, do you think Christian Brown is ready right now to fill those shoes? Yeah. And we went to break, and I came back. I said, yes, I do, I do. The problem is the ripple effect after that question. Yeah. It's now, so who's the new Christian Brown? Who, who, who's your sixth man? Where is your depth? That was already an issue, and that issue becomes even more glaring. So it's not just one size fits all. Hey, Christian Brown fills KCP shoes or 90% of it or whatever, however you want to slice it up, yeah. and that's the end of the conversation. It's, it's about the already known weakness of the basketball team. And uh, it just simply bec- becomes more glaring now. Yeah, and, and there's so many, so many levels to this, Zach. But let's start with this because you have to start with the five players on the court first. Why? Why do you think Christian Brown can fill the role of KCP? Why? Well, um, because what I've seen for the last two years. But what mi- have you seen? Mixed with uh, just a, a really talented defender who plays as hard as he can every single possession, Okay. who is a larger defender uh, than KCP, yeah. so better suited to guard guys like Anthony Edwards, maybe even Devin Booker, and and he's already done a good job at it. I've seen it. So he's not a total projection, but it's mixed with some projection because we haven't seen like this the amount that's going to be put on his plate this year. We haven't seen that. But that, at so- That's the thing, though. You've seen it in a limited role. And it's so easy when you know what, what you're going to have to go out there and do. Okay, Phil, I don't need you to score this time. I need you to go out there and give, put your heart on the court and just play straight defense. That's easy. It's because all you're doing is specifically telling me yeah. to do one thing, one task. Now you're saying for Christian Brown as a starter, hey, and we talked about it yesterday, Zach, play great defense the whole entire game, shoot well the whole entire game, be smart with the basketball the whole entire game, we're counting on you every single play. Are you ready for that? Yeah. That's where it's like he has not proven to me that you can sit there and guarantee that no, he's no, a, he's no. A, he, he should be a bona fide starter. Now, should he have the opportunity? 
for sure he should have opportunity. But nothing has shown me that Christian Brown is ready to take the range as the starting. Now, well, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what you would. I don't know what you would want to see more. And he's not a perfect player. This no. is why I'm saying like maybe 90 percent of what KCP is. And he's got to get better at shooting. He's, he needs to shoot the basketball well, better. Well, that's what I want to see more of. Just yeah, yes, yes. But um, you know, this guy was playing. He played every single game for the Nuggets this year. Every single regular season game, every single postseason game. Yeah. Averaged 20 minutes a night, and I think he has knocked it out of the park. Big picture, he's gonna have nights where he struggles. He's gonna. He might have weeks where he struggles. But <coughs> excuse me. On the whole. I think that young man in the last two years, like when you draft him uh, out of Kansas in the first round a couple years ago, you hope that it, you're getting to a certain point where you're ready to say, yeah. th- th- this guy, this, this guy is can guy. start for us. And the NBA crap, or the NBA draft is, is, is a crapshoot. Second half of that first round, it's, it's their Powerball tickets. And he actually played well. But the depth for me, the depth, yeah. I'm, okay, I'm actually – and and sort of like maybe beating around the bush a little bit more yesterday as we're processing the news of KCP's departure. Like, I'm okay with the decision that Calvin Booth made for the most part as long as he's not done. That that bench needs addressing, and it needs to be addressed with veteran players. And But until I have that information, it's like an incomplete picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so here's here. I'm gonna play some more criticism that that, that that's coming um, the Denver Nuggets way. Here's a more of Tim Bontemps of ESPN. He's no turning thirty. Like it's not like he's gonna be great for eight years. But you got a window he's right now. Famously not involved. I wonder if it makes it easier because of that. I mean, like he just is gone. Like he just went. Here's horses, what I would you say: I mean? if you're not gonna spend money right now when you have arguably the best team in the league, like what's the point? Right. No, what's that's the fair. point of any of this? That's like, fair. This is th- like all these rules are in place where you're trying to you're trying to pick your spots to go up to that kind of level. Boston, way into the second apron. They're spending a ton of money. Why? Because they think they can win a title. They went out and won a title last year with a super expensive team. Right. They pushed their chips in. They spent all this money. They went for it. Like, yeah, Denver won one, but, like, now they just basically, to me, took a step back from being a championship-level team, and it's only because of money. Like, I, I just – I hate that as a basketball fan. Wow. Uh, so, again, it's kind of yeah. the same theme. But but where – I and I don't know if it's only because of money. I don't know that. And I think that for me personally, I'm not there. I'm not. And, and I'll explain why here in a second. But, like – he is right when he says the Denver Nuggets roster has taken a step back. Yeah. It just they has. Have. They have. So I don't I that makes me uncomfortable. But again, we don't have the complete picture. But if you are of the mind that the Nuggets got better here in the last 72 hours, no. I don't think you know what you're talking about. No, we didn't get better. We we didn't stay stagnant. We got worse. You know, and and, and, and that's the issue. And that's kind of what I bring up. Okay. Even if you would have said, okay, Phil. Christian Brown being a starter now, we got we're still good. We still you know, we still got better in that that position as a starting five, but we're we're lacking on the depth. But in this case, you move Christian Brown up, and you can't tell me we still got better with the starting five. Mm. And now, mm. okay, when it comes to the bench, we got even worse. And so now it's like you're probably not, probably well until we find out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Until yeah, we yeah, find yeah, out yep, who yep, else yep. who else we're gonna add. Yep. Well, ho- hopefully, we do f- add some veterans to the bench. Yes. Um. But right now, you know, speaking of right now, yep. you can't tell tell me we got better in the starting five and we got and we're better on the bench. No, nope. Both things took a step back. Therefore, the team took a step back. And this idea that ah, it's all good because Jokic is in his prime and Jamal, it's a, it's not all good. It's not all good. You like more needs to be done here. I'm expecting more to be done. There's two roster spots left. Yeah. The Denver Nuggets need a backup center. I don't know why DeAndre Jordan's still here. I'm gonna, you know, it's 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 it's. I really like the man, DeAndre Jordan. He was a he was a great addition when he was uh, added to this team. He is a veteran presence. He's almost like a player coach. He's the closest thing to it right now in the NBA, player coach. He, he'll play like four minutes in the playoffs. Doesn't play. So why is he here? Because you need a backup center. He's a center, but he doesn't play. So anyway, that aside, uh, and he's now apparently a part of this recruitment for Russell Westbrook. I which guess is, that's, why, that's why he's here. <laughs> well, 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 I'll tell you what. It almost feels like. Man, this, and I'm okay with it. I really am. But if you covered up the name of the team and covered up Jokic's name and you said DeAndre Jordan and the best player from an NBA team are recruiting Russell Westbrook, I would think they play for the Lakers. 
this does not seem like an organic Nuggets move. That's why I'm saying I think we're about to step into like a new era of Denver Nuggets basketball where a lot of pieces are the same, but a lot of them are different. And these these guys who are going to be on the court every single night, it could be like not quite wholesale like we were just talking about with the Broncos. Yeah. But like you, it's just going to be so different. And it, it's just it's it's um man, there's just, there's just a lot of layers to this. You know, and different can be good, you know, if you have the right people. You know, you you add the right depth, the right veterans, and you have a special thing that can happen. But if you don't, mm. okay, then the window closes, yep. man. Yep. And it, it's all about this window we have. That's all we're talking about. Zach, we finally got to feel what it tastes like to win a championship, okay? And we had the opportunity right after winning it to do it again, yep. and we didn't do it. And now it's like, when does it hit the panic button? Because if we don't do it next year, yeah. then what? Yeah. You know, you're right. sitting you're, here. You're sitting here saying, "Man, we just wasted yeah. this opportunity that's in front of us to win multiple championships." Because this is what it's all about. It's all about winning and winning championships. That's all anybody ever remembers. Okay, when you talk about the Denver Broncos, when you talk about history yep. and then winning championships, sure. that's what you want to do with the Denver Nuggets. And it's about now, not just about you. As a general manager, you gotta you gotta think about the now and in the future. But for us fans, we're talking about right now and being able to have these experiences and say, you know what? We won another one. We have at least two. Yeah. Well, I, I, although I disagree with the fundamental point, or I shouldn't even say I don't, I disagree. I just don't know if I do agree that this is all about money and it's all about not cutting that big check getting in the second apron. And we spent a lot of time talking about the second apron yesterday. And it doesn't play well for sports talk radio. It just doesn't. It's like confusing, man. Dude, I have really spent time trying to figure this thing out. And I think that I know more than maybe most. If, if you know everything, you might you might as well turn, turn Phil, your headset in and be a lawyer. Bro, the teams are still trying to figure it out. See, I that's swear to point. God, I swear to God, I'm reading all <laughs> around from different outlets that the teams themselves are going through game theories trying to figure out what this new era of NBA basketball is like. And that's why I don't, I don't, uh, um, can't co-sign what Tim Bomtemps is saying from ESPN is because I think he used a verb in there, or not a verb, he used like a phrase in there. He was like, with this new apron, you have to pick your spots. That's more of what I think this is for Calvin Booth. It's like we're trying to avoid the second apron. Why? Because it's not just about writing a huge check. They make it impossible to do anything with your roster. Guys, impossible. You're in handcuffs. Like the Boston Celtics, this is their team. Moving forward, it's going to be vet minimum signings. And God forbid something happens injury-wise. To to one of these guys, you can't do anything when that happens. You are so restricted. It's It's unbelievable. I've never seen it in sports in general. So... If it's close between KCP and Christian, and Christian's maybe 88% of what you think KCP is, this might be a spot where you're like, I have to pick my spot. This is not the battle going to war for to go into the second apron. We're going to move on, and and now he's got to address the holes w- with the depth. But yeah. I don't think, I don't think in my gut, and if I did, I would just say it, but I don't think in my gut this is all about trying to save money. I don't think that's what it is. Then what can it be, though, Zach? And I know you just went through it, but that's what it's all about. Because if it wasn't about money, then everybody would get signed. It'd be the super teams like they were. It, but now because of the second aprons and all this stuff you just talked about, okay, it, it has to be about picking picking and choosing what you do because of the money and the money you don't have and the money you're not willing to spend when it comes to tax season, things like that. Okay, but what you're seeing from Boston is a team that seems to be all in. A team that feels like, you know what, let's just win it right now because that's what it's about. And then when later on down the line, when we start to really understand yeah. what this is talking about, the aprons and things like that, we'll start to, to, to figure things out. But right now, because they don't even know, and you just said a lot of teams are still trying to figure things out. Yeah. I'd still be in the now, man, trying to figure out how we win another championship. Uh, Phil, Phil, I am not going to tell you not to feel like that. Yeah. For, for, first of all, just in general, I'm not going to tell another fan how to be a for fan. Sure. But there's real validity to your side of the argument. I'm more okay with it because my understanding of the second apron, it's just it makes it almost impossible yeah. moving forward for Calvin to do his job. You you are you are at the behest of other veterans signing for literally the vet minimum. You can't even get a guy on the buyout market, a guy who's on the street, on the street. You can't even get him. You can't sign him, even if he wants to be there. 
when you hit that second apron. So I think if it, while what you're saying is true, that the team is less without KCP, yeah. I think it's legitimately choosing your big boy battles. And and he's like, you want to know what? He's turning 32 and at KCP. And this is not going to be where I use this bullet because once I'm out of that bullet, that's my last one. You you are handcuffed. And he's like, you want to so, know what? So what would the bullet be used for then? S- signing Aaron Gordon? Uh, wh- wh- like like that's kind of to me. It's yeah, like yeah, good what question. Are, what's the bullet for? Yeah, the bullet for the the bench because you you can only give so much money to the bench. Wh- who's that bullet going to be used for? It's a great question. You know, and and for a general manager, why do you do this job? <laughs> You do this job to win championships. That's all I care about. Zach. Right, right. You know, yep. that's all I care about. And if you put it in front of me, of course, I'm going to say, okay, what does our future look like? And what does right now look like? And right now, when we talk about a window, because a window can be shut as fast as it opens. Yep. Okay. Do we have a chance to win? That's all I ask. If the answer is yes, then what can we do? right now to make this opportunity come true of winning another championship. And that's kind of where I'm at with it when it comes to what are you holding the bullet for? Because if you hold it too long, yeah, your time passes, right. and Jokic is going to be knocking on your door mad at you see, see, for not giving that opportunity, opportunity to him. So we have this in the notes, and you're getting there organically. To think that it, you are guaranteed harmony – between Jokic and the organization as a birthright because Jokic is just so chill. And he uh, he's just so chill, and he's going to be in Denver forever, and it's all good. It's a lifetime contract, basically. Why? Because he's Jokic. doesn't work like this for any other NBA player. But he's Jokic, so everything's going to be fine. Yeah. I want to know what he thinks about this. I'd like to know what he thinks. Because for two years in a row, I believe this roster has taken a step backward with the departure of Bruce Brown, which was not Denver's fault. Just so we're on the same page, because I'm hearing, like, even Nick Wright, you know, who has his own lane and does a great job. He's like, you know, t- they didn't pay Bruce Brown. Well, they couldn't pay Bruce, yeah. Bruce Brown because of the NBA rules. They didn't own his bird rights. Therefore, it's either he could come back here and make seven, or he could go make 45 somewhere. You were never going to get yeah. him back. KCP was different. But I don't know what how Jokic views this KCP situation. I really don't. And... Again, um, it's not a birthright, and, and I'm just bringing it up because it needs to be, quite frankly. How does Jokic view this? And could what, we're, we, what we've been talking about for two days straight, could this be the first ever rift between Jokic and the organization? And how does that manifest itself? I have no idea. Maybe nothing. Maybe he's just internally frustrated, but maybe not. And we've never seen Jokic frustrated. And this idea that Jokic doesn't care about his legacy in basketball as secondary is a lie. He loves this, and he wants to stack as many titles as possible. Yeah. And if he doesn't think that you're putting him in the best position to do that, to think that, that he, the human instincts of frustration might not reveal itself in some way, shape, or form, is naive. Yeah, man. It's, uh, I, I really wish I could be in Jokic's brain right now because I don't think he is happy. I don't think he's happy with what's going on and what he's seeing. And I think that's why we heard talks of Jokic pounding the table to get somebody like Russell Westbrook become to, to come in the building to help out. Because I feel like that Jokic feels good when there are veterans around that he understands. Does okay? it, don't most great players, teach. they don't want to be surrounded by yes. kids. That's just a natural fact. I, I, like, I want to be around somebody that I know has my back, that understands that we need a win. Okay, that understands that, hey, this is where I need you to be. Okay, and do your side of the ball. Play good defense, right? KCP was that guy that didn't talk a lot. But he knew his place. And he knew what Jokic wanted. And that's hard to find sometimes. And that's why veterans are very important. And for if, if, if you think that Jokic is not upset right now, then you know you have something coming because I, I do think he's upset. I think he's upset. I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Gordon's upset. And I think Michael Malone is upset. Uh, th- that one uh, is very likely. 